you're looking for one reason why you should live in Spain, this is it. We have mixer taps here, but in the UK, this is what they have. Hot separate, cold separate, no middle ground. It's either too hot or too cold. What a country. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Flo, I am an Igbo girl, a Nigerian, living in Spain. Flo, what are you doing in this country? Oh, all this while I thought that you live in the US, or oh, I thought that you lived in the UK. I was pretty sure that you live in the UK and now you said it's Spain. Is it Spanish I saw written on that ingredient that you're using? <laughs> I welcome everyone, including non-Nigerians, yeah. It, don't mind my Nigerianness. Uh, this video is going to help a lot of people who are looking for new places to move to. I mean, now as well that it is a immigration season in Nigeria, a lot of people are looking for alternatives. You know that Nigerians, whenever you say that you live in Obodoibo, Obodoibo literally means white man's country so we use that term that Igbo term to refer to western countries so whenever a nigerian hears that you live outside nigeria you live in a western country the first country that comes to the person's mind is us <laughs> so the person will just assume that you live in the us if the person is not assuming us the second country they will assume is the uk after all we are an ex-colony of united kingdom so <laughs> And then most recently, Canada. Canada is our second country now. All the Nigerians are moving to Canada. <laughs> so why Spain? Yeah, what are you doing in Spain? What catapulted you into Spain? <laughs> for those who don't know, I've lived in the UK for three and a half years before. Yeah, I got a job in Nigeria and the company, I was supposed to be based in the UK, but they first of all sent me to France to do an introductory like their kind of it's kind of seminar welcoming me into the country not just me like the our set that were hired at the same time from different parts of the world from different countries so we all converge in France for that introductory seminar and after that we all move to our different uh, locations that we are supposed to be you know that we're supposed to live and work so that's how I left Nigeria for the first time. So you can imagine moving to France and the lovely weather. It was in south of France. Think Biarritz, Saint Jean de Luz. Oh, madre mia. So yeah, uh, 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 that's where I went from there to the UK and I was transported into the UK. And as soon as I landed in the UK, I was like, no way. Send me back home. <laughs> I don't like it here. So I was living in the UK. I lived in the UK for almost four years yeah before i moved here my husband lived here so i we got married and i moved here this is going to be a long chat get yourself a drink and a snack while we chat and feel free don't forget to let me know you where you prefer do you live in the uk do you love it what do you love about it do you live in canada wherever you live in the world i know that nigerians are scattered all over the world for different reasons so can you tell me why you live where you live, if you love it, if you hate it, or tell me the things that you love about it. So number one reason why I prefer Spain to the UK is the weather. Yay! If there's one deal breaker for me between living in the UK and living here, that would be the weather. The UK weather is predominantly dull, cold, bitterly cold, or depressingly cold and gloomy foggy yeah think about anything that i mean the only weather that is worse than the uk weather is the hurricane weather yeah i'm telling you the truth yeah sometimes we get hurricane force winds in the uk as well like it will blow down trees and they will block the rail tracks and we won't be able to go to work for my like two days <laughs> it's always windy yeah because uk is an island though they don't like to be called an island but it's an island surrounded by water somehow so it's exposed to the elements i mean this thing is like deep in my soul this weather thing i don't know if it's because of the time of the year that i arrived in the uk i arrived in the uk in october which is uh, autumn 
You can imagine going from the glorious golden sunshine, the beaches of Biarritz to Teesside. Yeah, I had to go for a course in Teesside. And I met a weather so foggy that you can literally touch the fog. You know how a plane is flying through the clouds. You can see the clouds like it's like 3D. You feel like you can touch it. That's how the fog, the thick fog that we met in Teesside. I was like, what is this? Is this the same Obodoibo <laughs> that they're talking about? Because I thought that all Obodoibo would be like France. <laughs> so... So that, that threw me from glorious to deep down in the ditch. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like that. It wasn't a good impression. So till this day, the weather is, uh, is the number one thing that is a deal breaker for me. Here in Spain, they have the four seasons, three months of winter, three months of spring, three months of summer, three months of autumn. Yeah, it's not unlike in the UK, the UK has nine months of winter two and a half months of spring and uh, one week of summer and that one week you have two days of sunshine and the rest it will be raining yeah you, you'll be confused <laughs> so, no i don't do cold very well no 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 the winters here can be cold as well but at least you have clear blue skies on a cold day. You're cold, quite all right, but the sun is shining. So it makes all the difference. In some countries like Norway or Canada, you have the snow. The snow makes everywhere look so heavenly. I mean, angelic, and it makes the cold more bearable. But in the UK, there is no snow. It's overcast, it's gloomy, it's sad. It's probably drizzling from morning till night. And it was getting dark. Like I live my life in darkness. I would wake up at in the morning to get ready for work. While getting ready for work, it's dark. While sitting on the train, it's dark. You go to work in the dark, and then you come back in the dark because uh, it got dark at 3.34 p.m. So you still be in the office. In fact, sometimes right after lunch, it's already getting like it's already dusk. <laughs> and before you know it, everywhere is pitch black. So you go to work in the dark, you come back in the dark, you never see the sunshine. Like, you never, even when it's daylight, it's gloomy daylight, overcast. And here, oh, we have, at least, it's not that dark in the, in, even in the winter. If you guys leave me, I can talk about this UK weather and the Spanish weather all day long. So moving on. Number two, the way the city is designed, built. Spain is a country that is designed for tourism. Yeah. They have lovely cities everywhere. Very built up, very well planned, very well designed. In fact, when you live in Spain, you feel like you're on holiday every time. All you need to do is get out of the house, go for a walk. There are so many things to see. There are so many things to make your life worthwhile, to make you enjoy life. But in the UK, they have these small cities that are just for residential, maybe they built it and because they, they want to build residential, you know, they want to build a city for a factory or an industry around there and that's it. There's no like attraction to it. And then some, some of their cities, you don't know if you will call them a village or you call them a city like that, so small. But here, the cities here are independent, like self-sufficient, I would say, yeah, self-sufficient. They have everything they have all the supermarkets there they, they are quite big the cities in spain are quite big and they have a big pop huge population so you can actually live in a city without needing to go to another place but when i was living in the in in england in the uk uh where i lived was not london london and a lot of times if i need anything i'll have to go into london even though london is close to where i lived but uh, yeah that fact that that place that I lived in did not have a lot of things. I have to go into London for a lot of things. Number three, the lifestyle. Ooh, the lifestyle in Spain. This one is a huge one for me because when I first came here, I didn't like it. I was like peeved by the kind of laid back lifestyle. Not even kind of, this is their life, laid back. The Spanish people are so laid back. But after a while, I've come to understand that these people are smart. 
These people are living the good life. They understand this life. All these things, boom, hustle and this, this. What is happening tomorrow? Let it happen today. This is a country that still plans their life. Their, everything that runs in this country is planned around siesta. Yeah. Even up till now, most corner shops close at 2 p.m. and reopen at 5 p.m. Some offices do that as well. And these shops that I'm talking about, they open at 10 a.m. <laughs> it's not like other countries where, where people are going to work, rush hour. The corner shops are already open by 7 a.m., even before then. A lot of supermarkets do 24-hour service. But here in Spain, in the city where I live, not yet. We don't have a single 24-hour supermarket here. The supermarkets now open at 9 a.m. and close at 10 p.m. In fact, this is a, a recent uh, opening time. Initially, about five years ago, as recent as five years ago or even less, they were opening at 10 a.m. And that used to peeve me eh? because, you know, in the morning, I'll take my kids to school and schools open at 9 a.m. here. And my plan will be normally the perfect plan will be to drop them at school and then go to the supermarket and pick up something that I needed to pick up. But because they opened at opened, then they were opening at 10 a.m. Because they opened at 10 a.m., I would have to drop the kids at school come back home and then keep looking at the time, you know, because it doesn't make sense to go to the supermarket and wait outside for them to open. Like they heard my prayers. In the last four to five years, they started opening at 9 a.m., which is perfect for me. Quality of life in Spain is the best, yeah. They understand this life. They're not bothered about anything. They relax and have their meals. Like we get three hours for lunch. <laughs> they have the mediterranean diet uh, there is a lot of fresh foods in this country they, they they have gmo foods but yeah they haven't gone as far as some countries i'm not going to mention names they have a good quality of life they are a very family oriented country just like we are in nigeria they have work-life balance which i love they're not into i want to be rich i want to be rich i want to find money by all means i want to walk around the clock yeah you hardly see people walking pulling double shifts here yeah. they have festivals every city has has its own festival that they observe every year not to talk of other small small festivals in fact they 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 always have a reason to party and enjoy life like i love them i love their attitude to life in fact this is another thing that has endeared me to this place it has completely changed my perspective about what a good life is yeah this is not what i knew as a good life but spain has completely directed me towards finding out you know discovering what a good life is and you, 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 when you discover that you generally be happier and enjoy life happier like really really live life not exist in general the spaniards know how to live life it can be annoying sometimes for people that have lived in fast-paced societies like nigeria or the uk before coming here it can be frustrating at the beginning in fact in spain you get you will be on a queue and then the person at the front gets to, even he gets to their turn, they will go there and be chatting about family and, and uh, what do you call it, about the weather. <laughs> and you'll be there, people, people should do this thing now, let's go. This, we're not here for a chat. They don't care. And the other people, the other Spaniards or people that are used to it in the, uh, in the queue will not complain because they know that they themselves, when they get there, they will chat their own. <laughs> like, so it used to peep me, but I'm used to it now. We are not rushing anywhere. This life, we are marking time. We are not rushing anywhere. I mean, if I if I want to be done by say 11 a.m., I will go there by. I will make sure I'm there at 9 a.m. Something like that. Like for the government offices anyway. I'll make sure I'm there by 9 a.m. so that I will be the first to go in and then finish what I came to do before <laughs> the the chatters come. <laughs> so I found my way around it. Another one. Living in Spain gave me the opportunity to learn a new language. Yay! As I said, I am Nigerian and the official language in Nigeria is English. So I already know how to speak English. Everything is done in English in Nigeria. Our schooling, our education, communicating with people from uh, other tribes is done in English. So living in the UK helped me improve my pronunciation of English words because yeah, in Nigeria we mispronounce, we unknowingly mispronounce a lot of words. So living in the UK helped me with that, but that's it. 
uh, in terms of grammar, I've always known my grammar. <laughs> so I've always known my vocabulary. Moving here helped me learn a new language and a, a very yeah widely spoken language in the world, which is very, very beneficial. So now I speak four languages, English, Igbo, Spanish, and yeah, Nigerian Pidgin. I'm counting that because Nigerian Pidgin is a completely different language. The next one, a big one, safety and security. Yeah. I feel more secure in Spain than in the UK. Yeah. When I when I live in the UK, it was always crime, guns, guns in the news. Actually, the, the year I moved to the UK, there were a lot of uh, abductions in the news, like young girls abducted on their way to school. It made me afraid of going to work, like working at night. Like I told you, in the winter, you go to work and then in the dark, you come back in the dark. And because there were not a lot of people on the streets, sometimes you feel, you, you don't really feel safe. You don't feel really feel secure. But here, in the city where we live, I don't know, maybe they have in the capital, in Madrid, but there are no gangs here. Uh, kids are well behaved, very respectful, very well brought up. You hardly hear that anybody is being bullied or something like that. No, it, it's hard. I feel very good bringing up my kids in this country. I, I love this country because of the safety. It's a very safe country. You're not worried about a lot of things. You can leave your house at any time. I, as a female, I know that females in the UK are always afraid of going out because they don't feel safe because they are, they are more likely to be attacked uh, when they're walking out alone, more likely to be groped, molested, but there's nothing like that here. Where I live, I can leave my house at any time. I don't feel unsafe in any way. I've, it has never occurred to me that I, I'm unsafe in this country at any time. I can go to any part of this city where I live in and I won't feel somehow But In a lot of places, they, they will tell you, don't go to this side or uh, you, you're passing through that side because of the things you're seeing, you don't really feel safe. There are parts of London that I go to and immediately it gets to you that this place is not safe. Like you, you have that instinct, like that shiver, you know, kind of crimes you hear about in the UK. The uh, uh, all these abductions, rape, killing. But here, yeah, I have never had any reason whatsoever to feel that way. Spain generally has a lower crime index than the UK. You don't hear about all these knife crimes, yeah, gangs, yeah. The most you hear in the news here is love crimes, like spouses killing each other. That's what you hear about here in Spain. I feel so at rest i have the peace of mind of bringing up my children in this place i love it i don't have any fears of them having negative external influence from their peers and all that no i don't have i don't have that kind of concerns here at all at all which is really good the next one healthcare in both countries healthcare in these two countries are free i'll use free like that because as long as you're working in the UK or in Spain and paying social security, yeah, you are going to get absolutely free healthcare. Yeah. In the UK, I didn't really use their healthcare that much. Once I needed to see a dermatologist, because for those who don't know me, of course, most of you don't know me when I had acne. I used to have really bad acne. So I needed to see a dermatologist and they sent me an appointment that is one year away from the day I made the appointment. Yeah, so that's that's too much. And then their clinics, I don't really understand their clinics, the one they call going to your GP. It's just a building with offices for the doctors finished. But here what we have uh, health centers that are, you know, a few blocks use one health center. The health centers are usually well equipped, like to the grade of hospital, they have a dentist there, they have pediatrician there, they have uh, doctors, you know, for adults there, they have nurses there, they have uh, labs where you can do blood work there. They have a lot of people working there in the admin, they can make your appointment with the, with the specialists at the hospital there. So it's much more, I, I, I believe it's much more organized here than in the UK. In the UK, whenever I went to see my GP, I always feel that they don't have enough equipment to actually check what is happening to you. It's just an office with a building with doctors in the offices and then a nurse. I don't really feel that the, the their healthcare, like their primary healthcare is 
up to par in the UK. And then with that bad experience of having a one year, <laughs> one year <laughs> duration wait list for seeing a dermatologist. No, that's the only time I needed to see a specialist. Maybe if something that was happening to me was an emergency, something I needed to see a doctor immediately, probably a specialist immediately, probably they would have given me a sooner date. But, you know, that one year blew my mind. <laughs> I don't really get sick like that. So I didn't really use the healthcare in the UK like that. But here, I, I gave birth here. Uh, my kids have been in hospital here and all that. So their hospitals are up to more than standards the teaching hospital where i live this is not even like category two city in spain it's quite big but i mean when you are comparing spanish cities this is like a category three based on the population that live here but they have a massive i've shown this hospital in my in some of my videos a massive hospital here well equipped they have everything you can think of the, the rooms are like oh my god like hotels the food they serve there, everything, the service is great, the attention is great, everything, everything is great about this place. I may be biased here or I may not have enough information to talk about the UK hospital, but yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the hospital, I'm so happy with the healthcare here. I love it, I, I just love it, I love it and uh, it's free, it's free as long as even one member of your family is working, it's free for the whole family. So there's also a healthcare index, I'll show it here and you'll see that Spain is is one of the top countries then cost of living yeah this is a huge one <laughs> uh, this goes without saying the uk is more expensive than spain yeah hands down is it food some of the food that the uk eats come from spain and france so food is in abundance here food is cheap here you cannot go hungry even if you're on less than minimum wage in fact yeah even the charitable organizations give people food as a way to help them accommodation that's housing is cheap much cheaper than in the uk i mean a lot of people always say like a lot of nigerians that lived here and then probably when they become nationals of spain they want to move to the uk because they say that you earn more in in the uk but the higher you earn the more you spend it <laughs> here a three-bedroom flat still goes for around 500 to 700 euros per month and in the uk it goes for much more i knew when i was living in the uk this was early 2000s so my friend was living in a in a studio flat that self-contained and he was paying 400 pounds 400 pounds you know what that is 400 pounds per month to live in a self-contained a small self-contained house I, I wasn't here in spain at that time but i believe that at that time in spain that 400 can get comfortably get you a Three bedroom flat, maybe not so fine three bedroom flats, sometimes two bedroom flat. Here, schooling is tuition is absolutely free unless you choose to go to there are some uh, church Catholic schools here that the government subsidizes, so you pay a little bit of fees there. And the, the standard between the public schools and the Catholic schools, semi private schools here, are pretty much the same. We only buy books here. There was one back to school video I made, and some people were telling me that in the uk even the books and stationery are free okay we don't get that here on a normal job eight hours is more than enough to fund your life like pay for your accommodation uh, yeah food pay your bills or is it transportation <laughs> in the uk i know how much i paid for my uh, rail card and every single year all my years in the uk they always increased the the transportation fares yeah i feel that the uk overall has a higher cost of living job on job you may make more money because it, it also depends on where you live in the uk because when we say uk we're talking about the whole of the uk like scotland england wales yeah so it depends on which part you live in really here the same if you live in madrid here for instance you get higher paid jobs but then you pay more on accommodation for instance then when it comes to the people the spanish people are much 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 warmer than the Britical people, hey, stiff face, stone face. When you come on the on the train, you see, you just look at everybody. They'll be reading their newspapers with a stiff face. 
But here in Spain, you enter a bus, you sit with someone, they strike up a conversation with you. You're walking on the street, they look at you, they start talking to you. That's so warm. I mean, they're such warm people. They're not like building a wall around themselves. No, they are. The Spanish people are just like Nigerians. They're, you know how Nigerians put their mouth into your business? <laughs> Spanish people can do that. Oh, they don't dare. They start asking you, where are you from? I like your hair. I like. I have an appointment. Two hours later. What I was saying, the Spanish people, they like to socialize. They have a very active social life. They, yeah, they, they, they put your, they put mouth in your business. They, yeah. They want to know about you, get to know you and yeah, ask you a lot of questions about where you're from and all that. Yeah. Uh, it's not like in the UK where even your next door neighbor. I lived there for almost four years, but I never knew our next door neighbor. Yeah. 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 I know I wasn't always around, but still in four years is a long time to live next to someone without having ever seen them. You don't know who they are. <laughs> then when it comes to racism, I've never experienced any racism here. A lot of people tell me maybe it's because I've not worked with the Spanish people because for those of you who know the kind of work I do, I don't work here. Some people say at the place of work, you can experience racism. My husband has all his uh, working life in this pain. He has worked with Spanish people and he has never complained about racism. The thing he has complained about someone, a superior, is just that the person is a bad person. The <laughs> person is bad to everybody. <laughs> He's just not a nice person. When I first came here, uh, my husband was looking to move to another place. So we were looking for another apartment. Then I was the one doing all the calls. Like, I, I, I was already learning Spanish and I learned Spanish really quickly. Within six months, I was speaking conversational Spanish. What I was doing is I'll get newspapers and I'll call because people usually advertise that they have a place to rent in the newspapers. So I'll get the newspapers and I'll be calling them. Once they hear my voice, of course, they know you're a foreigner from the way you speak Spanish. They'll be like, it's taken. <laughs> the house is taken. Red Cross was one of the places I was learning because here when you arrive, uh, charitable organizations give free Spanish lessons and they can help you uh, make calls. So I went to them and I said, we are trying to get a new place and I've been calling and once I called, they tell me that the place is taken. They told me, no, the place is not taken. That They noticed that some people do not want to rent to foreigners. Uh, once they hear your accent, they say, so they say, okay, bring the ones you like and, and, and I'll call, call on your behalf. So when they call, those people will tell them that the, the houses are still available. Yeah. But I honestly don't take it personal because I know, I know what tenants can do to you. And I've seen what immigrants do to people here. Some people will come here, you think that you're renting a, a, your flat to a family of four, for instance, father, mother, and two kids. But then they'll bring all their relatives, their extended families in there. There'll be like 20 people living in one apartment, apartment meant for four people. So they all come there and sleep at night. Weekends, they will be making noise and neighbors will be calling the police and all that. So uh, uh, they, by the end of the day, when they leave your apartment, they trash your apartment. So I don't blame people when they do that because when tenants do you strong thing, eh, generally Spanish people are warm people, welcoming people. I, I like them. I enjoy staying with them. I've never had any problems with them. Spanish people are one of the... I've been around. I've been to a lot of countries. Trust me. I've been to more than 20 countries and Spanish people are... Maybe after Nigerians, Spaniards are the next in line. I enjoy my stay here. That's the longer shot of it. I don't know how long this video is now. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to tell me your experiences, where you live, what's your life like. I mean, you can you can also make a video in case uh, you're a YouTuber. You can also make a video and let's come and watch and know why you live where you live in if you lived in two countries which one do you prefer bye bye oh.